Guten Tag. It's Andrew Glazer from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I would like to teach you how to use the remainder theorem to find the remainder of some polynomial division. So let's keep in mind what the remainder theorem states. It states that if you have some function f of x, which is represented in this problem as this thing, right? this is known as the dividend. And when you divide that now by some factor of x minus k, which in this problem is represented by this divisor, then the remainder of this division, the remainder, will be equal to f of k. So what that means now, right, and you're probably like, okay, I got it, and then once you said this, I, you lost f of k, what does that mean? Basically what that means is that if you can identify the k value in the divisor here, you can simply plug that value now on in to your dividend in the place of every x, and whatever that result then is when you do the math is your remainder. Okay. Now the easy way to find then the k value of the divisor is to actually set it equal to zero. Set it equal to zero and solve this bad boy for x. So this is x then is equal to negative three. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, this is your k value. This is k. Now this also, by the way, will work even if you have a coefficient in front of the x, even though the remainder theorem doesn't really state that. I've done a bunch of examples and it seems to work every time. So I'm sure somebody out there with a mathematics PhD is gonna say, well, no, 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 I mean, it doesn't work in this case. And that could be true. I, didn't, I haven't proved anything. But I just know that in all the problems that I've been doing, it works every time. So it might wind up working all the time. I'm not 100% sure. But don't fret in case you have a coefficient here. Just perform the same procedure. Find what x is, and whatever x would be equal to then would be your k value. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this k value and plug it in for each x in your original function. That's what it means to plug in k here for x, okay? So you're gonna take three then, multiply it then by negative three cubed, minus then two times negative three squared, plus negative three minus four. And all you now have to do is do this math on out. So whenever you cube a negative number, it's gonna remain negative, so that's good to keep in mind. And three times three, is gonna be a nine, and then times another three is gonna be 27. So we're gonna have a negative 27 in here. Cool, then minus now two times negative three squared, that's gonna become a positive. Anytime you square a negative, it always becomes positive, and that's gonna be a nine. Plus then a negative three, uh, you can change that to just a subtraction now, right? Minus three, and then minus four. Let's handle these, and let's, why don't we multiply that on out, right? So negative 27 multiplied by three, negative times a positive is gonna be a negative. And then when you do the 27 times three, you can take out the calculator if you like, but quite honestly, you don't need it for this one, right? This is gonna be two times three is going to be six and then eight, right? So negative 81. Then subtract now from that a 18, right? Because two times nine, then minus three, minus four. So now just start combining these terms, right? You know, if you think about it, 81 is about how many? 19 units away from 100. You're basically then taking a double negative, so you're adding them. So this result here should be now a negative 99. Minus then a three, minus then a four, right? This is a seven. Seven I always think about as, you know, when you have a 99 or you have something that ends in a nine, whatever number you're gonna add to it, so negative 99 minus then seven, it's going to simply come out to be one less than what you would have anticipated if this were 100. In other words, it would be negative 106. And that's then the remainder. Okay, now you don't have to do all that mental math. I mean, if you don't want, you can just take this and plug it into the calculator. But challenge yourself. Don't take the easy road. Sometimes the road less traveled is a lot more interesting. Who wrote that poem? If you know it, you know more than I do. Anyway, uh, so this is the remainder. Okay, now if you wanted to you know, prove that this is the remainder, I guess, to yourself, or use another method, try synthetic division. All right, try synthetic division on this polynomial division. And let's see what we get here. Ready? I'll run through it. Bam. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our dividend and write in all the coefficients. You start with your x cubed, 
term, the coefficient there, then you go x squared, x, and then you're constant. So the coefficient of the x cubed is a 3, the coefficient of the x squared is a negative 2, the coefficient of the x term is a 1, and the constant is going to be a negative 4. Then what you're going to do to find the number on the outside here, you're going to take your divisor and set that bad boy equal to 0. Oh, interesting. Isn't that what we did before? And yes, it is. Right, so when you find the result here, you're going to take the negative 3, plug it in on the outside. So then all you do is you're going to follow this division algorithm. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Right, that's just a complicated term for follow some steps. So bring the 3 on down, then you multiply this 3 by the outside 3. That's going to become a negative 9. You add this column on up, so that's going to be a negative 11. Then what you do is you take this result, multiply it by that outside value. Negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 11 is going to be 33. And then you add this column on up right? So that's going to be a 34. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the 34, multiply it by the 3, do it on out on the side if you need, right? Negative times a positive is going to be a negative, so just write in the sign there. Don't worry about the signs now when you do this multiplication. But 4 times 3 is a 12, 3 times 3 is 9, add a 1, it's 102. So now you're going to put in 102 over here. And when you take a negative 102, subtract a 4 from it, you're basically doing addition, right? You're, but you're going to keep the negative sign. And that's a 106, ladies and gentlemen, 106. And that was the remainder we predicted before. Isn't that a lot nicer, though, to use the remainder theorem instead of going through all the synthetic division mumbo jumbo? All right. Uh, synthetic division does have its place, but if you have to just find the remainder, you know, you don't need to do synthetic division. Just use your old friend, the remainder theorem. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Check out our channel, by the way, because if you like what you saw here, you might like what we have elsewhere. Because we have physics, chemistry, where we solve actual problems. We have thousands of solutions out there. Because guess what you're going to see on your exam, ladies and gentlemen? Questions and problems. That's what we focus on. That's what we specialize in. Check us out. We'll see you soon.